ETF group, which yesterday announced a 77% decline in pre-tax profit to 311 million shillings for the year ending 31st of December 2017. Now, according to the company, in the period under review, gross non-performing loans increased uh, to 8.2 billion shillings from 6.2 billion in 2016 due to a slowdown in the property market and overall unfavorable macroeconomic conditions. Total operating income declined by some 7.8% for the period under review to 4.32 billion down from 4.69 billion recorded in 2016. Total operating costs occasioned by investment in alternative channels as the company ramped up a focus on service provision through digital channels. Well, moving on, and this time to the field of oil and gas, the Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, KNCCI, and the Kenya Extractives Program, KEXPRO, have launched well, the working policy framework towards MSME development in oil and gas counties and officially handed it over to the PS in the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Cooperatives, Betty Minor, and the Council of Governors for Implementation. The framework seeks to provide a guiding framework outlining the types of targeted policy interventions that the five identified county governments, namely Baringo, Elgeo, Marakwet, Marsabit, Trukana, and, well, West Pokot can adopt to facilitate the development of MSMEs supporting the oil and gas sector. The framework also picks lessons from, well, right across the world, including academic theories, expert input, and case studies from places like Angola and Chad that will act as practical examples uh, for MSME development. Between the year 2000 and 2010, when only two wells were dr drilled to the new phase starting 2010, when there has been re-injection of momentum with over 40 wells drilled in the last eight years, largely driven by the discovery of oil in Gamia 1 well in the year 2012. Well, to, well, news from the Securities Exchange now. Now, Liberty Kenya Holdings PLC, the holding company for Liberty Life Kenya and Heritage Insurance Kenya, has reported a profit after tax that increased from 627.8 million shillings to 845.7 million, representing a 35% jump in growth as the gross and premium revenue also increased from 9.6 billion shillings in 2016 to 9.7 billion last year. Total assets increased from 34.9 billion in 2016 to 37.1 billion in 2018. The group continues to be a key player in the insurance sector, both in Kenya and in Tanzania. Now, during the year, the group sold a non-strategic subsidiary specifically created to own a property located in Naivasha in Kenya. Now, its sister company, Stanley Fahari Irate, has announced a net profit jump of 61% to 171.1 million shillings, up from 129.4 million in 2016, supported by growth in the rental and related incomes. The improved performance is despite challenging economic conditions that prevailed over the year, including the, prolong uh, the pro prolonged electioneering period and interest rate capping. The rate has currently invested in three seed properties, namely Greenspan Mall, Bay Holdings, and Signature International at a total consolidated value of some 2.46 billion shillings. Well, to further develop income, the rate has identified a cinema operator who is expected to start operations in quarter four of 2018 from its largest asset at Greenspan Mall. The rate will incur just under 40 million shillings to modify the identified unit to suit the intended user. To the oil sector.